classify it as a parasite, they classify it as a group of cells, that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, um, it, it's amazing to me that they have to make it about babies not being human beings. Mm-hmm. They have to. Because the moment you think, and, and I think, let's go with something. Across the nation, not only are they lying to people that women don't have rights because of the loss of Roe versus Wade, which is a lie, they also put out this lie that 70% of America believes and supports Roe versus Wade. That's not true. The truth is that if your only question is, do you believe women should be able to have abortions? Most people will say yes, with a caveat, with a condition on that. See, most people do not agree, and it is overwhelmingly the fact that most people in America do not believe in late-term abortion. In fact, most people tend to believe that the 15-week mark is correct, that roughly about three, four months, you can have an abortion up to three, four months, and then anything beyond that has special conditions on it, like rape. Like incest, incest. Like yeah. death of the mother, not health of the mother. That's a key difference. Not health, but death of the mother. And when you take that out, there, and you're seeing politicians who want to be pro murder of babies, otherwise known as abortion, they like to lump all that together and say, well, no, that's just everyone supports it. No, they don't. The conditions are important because there is a difference between, um, a baby without a heartbeat and a baby with a heartbeat. And by the constitution, the government is there to protect those who cannot protect themselves. A baby with a heartbeat is a separate body from the mother. It is a separate American life. And if anything, by the constitution, the government has a right and a duty to protect that child. That's why this gets to be very, it's complicated in a way, but yet it's simple. Pregnancy does not diminish your chance for the pursuit of happiness. So by all measure, that argument fails. Mm-hmm. By the way, much of what we're talking about right now is in the 98 pages of what Justice Alito actually said. And I recommend to people If you haven't read it, please do read it. It is available. And in particular, I think page five, third paragraph, bottom of the page, is the most important um, paragraph to read. Because I actually did read what he said, and I think that's important for people to know, just in case. But let's continue. So you, you hit something there. Culturally, we're, we went away from the idea of abortion being a last-ditch effort or a last option. It's a, it's a replacement for contraception. We're seeing on TikTok, on Twitter, where women are now, there are feminists out there who are now saying, well, we're going to withhold sex and there's going to be a dearth of sex because we're no longer going to be able to have the ease of abortions. Well, that just exemplifies the fact that abortion, which was initially meant as a last, um, last effort, last action, has now become a common contraceptive action, which defeats the purpose of why they did it in the first place. We, we've morally, we've taken a very different stance on this, again, which is why it's individual and why it needs to be on a state level, not a federal level, because the federal government can't react to the shifting moral viewpoints of individuals and in in individual states. And I'd also bring up that the logic that we're seeing from the pro-abortion, pro-kill baby movement, uh, especially the late-term abortion in New York and California, is that these are the same people who just spent two years, two and a half years, telling us that we don't have control of our own bodies. We must accept certain vaccine medications and that we we are required to have them otherwise we can't work we can't live we're evil but these very same people are turning around and telling us well you the baby doesn't have a right and that people have a choice to do whatever they want with their bodies 
again, this is why it can't be a federal level decision because there's too much, uh, diff- too many differences in the way people and states are looking at this, and you can't have a blanket opinion because well, it doesn't make sense. Well, Hollywood has also done a bang up job at glorifying abortion. Well, they never go back and look at the aftermath. They never go back and look at the psychological trauma that a woman goes through six weeks, six months, six years after having the abortion. What they what that woman goes through mentally. What happens after the woman has had one abortion or two abortions and then they finally settle down, they get married and they have a couple of kids later on. They never go back and look back at the woman psychologically and say, as they're looking at their two children that are, that what have what happens to the thought about the children that would have been? Nobody has really done an in-depth analysis to find out if there's any depression that's associated with it, any regret that's associated with it long-term. And they've done such a bang-up job at trying to sell this that even putting it as an over-the-counter prescription, it's, the, it's, it's plan B. Well, plan A is the clinic. Plan B is the pill. Well, it's not a plan A. It's not a plan B. This is what happens when you have a lack of planning. Uh, exactly. A lack and, of planning. 